podcast. For your career and your life, no matter what business you're in. Hello and welcome to a brand new showcase season of the Northern Power Women podcast. I'm your host, Simone Roche, and as we get closer to this year's Northern Power Women Awards on the 21st of March, a night dedicated to showcasing amazing talent we've got in and from the North. Each week, I'll be chatting to an incredible role model from across our community. And with the category shortlist that were announced earlier in January, tomorrow, the 8th of February, we'll be sharing who has made it onto this year's future and power lists. We'd like to say a huge thank you to our headline sponsor of the awards, EY, who supports of our awards enables us to continue to showcase the hall of role models that are out there. And speaking of trailblazing role models, on today's showcase season debut episode, I'm joined by the wonderful Shirley Houston MBE, yes, MBE, quite recently in the New Year Honours. And spoiler alert, we'll be joining the 2022 Power List, which is announced tomorrow. For the past nine years, Shirley has played Izzy Armstrong in the hit soap Coronation Street. The character and Shirley both have Ella's Danlos syndrome and Shirley increases awareness about the condition and works to remove barriers for other disabled artists and advocates for disabled people. Shirley is also a founder of Triple C, the Creative Confidence Collective, which increases inclusion access to the arts for disabled performers. And for the last 12 years, the organisation has changed lives by running drama workshops in schools and communities across the Northwest England for young disabled people. I see this all over social media, I see all these opportunities out there. So a massive high five and a massive welcome, a massive congratulations all round. <laughs> Shirley, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. Thank you. Again, it's so brilliant news about the MB. We were chatting uh, just before and sort of showing the top tips of, you know, uh, really making the most of that massive, massively great spotlight on you. So tell me why you were awarded this honour for those who don't know and what did it personally mean to you to be recognised? I'm a bit shy about it, if I should say. I'm not very good at the focus on me, if you know what I mean. But um, it was for um, services to drama and and people with disabilities. Yes, you can tell it means an awful lot to me because I can't find the words to express it. Um, It was just such an honour because that's not why I do what I do, I suppose. What I do, as as with most people in this, you know, you're driven by a passion for change. And it's something I don't really shout about, I suppose, my involvement in it because I'm busy doing it, I suppose, as as you do. Um, So, yes, it was lovely and wonderful to be recognised. And yes, it's the thing that makes me not be able to string my words together very well. So you've worked extensively in TV and radio for the last 20 years, but your current role on Corrie means you're in millions of people's home every single week now. So how important is, of course it's important for the visibility in the mainstream and the roles to be reflective of real life, i.e. it's not about being disabled, it's being a participant in real life. Why is it so important to you? Oh my gosh, it's um, beyond important to me in that respect because when I was growing up, I'd never saw anybody like me on television and that's the that's the sad case for many young disabled people still. I mean, luckily, Children's BBC do a, a fantastic job in that now. But if you look in the mainstream media, I mean, it is changing and I think it's changing quite rapidly because we've come together as a community to make that change. But it's so important because I think it has such a ripple effect. The way that we tell our stories, that's kind of how we learn as human beings, isn't it? We learn by empathy and understanding of other people's situations. And before disabled people weren't really on television, we were done by a non-disabled viewpoint, which was normally of pity, sympathy, to be fixed, to be killed. Whereas actually what's phenomenal about the way Coronation Street does it is it's about humanity and it's just about the character. And actually disability is a secondary thing because as a human being, disability isn't part of my personality. It's just a given circumstance. And I think that's why it's really important to change that on television because I fundamentally believe if we change how we are perceived as disabled people on television, we'll be changed how we are represented in society. Because um, we're 20% of the population. And at the moment, we're still excluded. You know, we're still excluded from education. It's, there's so many things that um, we're behind on in our rights as as equal human beings to everybody else. And I mean, this pandemic's oh, very indicative of how disabled people are treated. It's just the vulnerable who are going to die. Well, that's me. <laughs> that's that's many millions of us, 14, you know, that, that's abhorrent. And and the thing is that that's how we're judged. So 
And I think it's things like Coronation Street and if other, you know, as other shows are taking that up, stops us being seen as somebody who life is worth less than, than other people's. And I think it is positive to see this progress. And I think through your, what I see again across social media, I see your triple C organisation very much reaching out positively. I, I saw something on social media the other day, I think somebody posted something and then you took that approach of, I would love to talk to you about this. I would love to educate you this. And that's all part of that role modelling and that real life, mm. isn't it? I think it's really, and I love that approach that you take. Yeah, we've sort of really honed that, I think. And I think, it, because the thing is, there's no point in being angry. And of course, people are angry, but you can't stay angry. And anger doesn't really get you anywhere because it doesn't create a level playing field in conversation. And the thing is, a lot of this stuff is we're inheriting society's prejudice and naivety around different human beings. So therefore, actually, the best way to make a change is a warm, friendly approach. Make the person feel comfortable in their lack of knowledge or or, their, or the fact that they've come at this wrong. That's okay, that's okay, we can have a chat, we can help you. Um, and I think that's the best way to do it because if you, if you go in with anger or judgment or blame, then things don't change because you automatically get people's backs up. And it's, it's quite difficult sometimes. Um, I think from people's point of view when when they've been blocked for so long. But I think what's been brilliant is we've come together as um, Dank's got now over 1,200 um, disabled creatives in its community. Wow. And we've, we've adopted this warm, friendly approach and it makes people, well, it's just easier, isn't it, not to have a shout? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm a firm believer of that. I'm, I'm kind of, I've, I've never been into the like the finger pointing, you're not doing this or you're not doing this. I'm very much along that kind of, what can we do? You know, there's so many barriers all over the place about every single piece that's going on out there. But I think I'm always a firm believer of what, what we can do. So I have to say that your intention of having that warm conversation and having that guidance and working with, as opposed to working against, I think really shouted out for me uh, through your brand and through your social. So I think Think, I think that's amazing. I think that is such a positive stance to take. And I think one of the things is I'm really keen as to how we can all be intentional allies, particularly mm. in, in, you know, in paths that we have not been down, you know. Um, so what conversations can we start? Any sort of top tips or top advice that, that you could give to our podcast listeners? Oh, my gosh. Well, I'd say in terms of disability, start putting it on your agendas, put it on every single agenda, because actually at the moment in terms of disability is that we are an afterthought um, and even in an afterthought in diversity um, and with the road less trodden because it seems, I think it's perceived as a bit more complicated from the outside, whereas actually if you just start talking about it, if you're creating a new project or, you know, um, looking at something in a, in a new way, go, how would this impact if somebody had... Um, you know, different areas of disability. Get get disabled people on your board. Get disabled people in your staff. Start advertising. And the thing is, when you're advertising, say, for new staff members, start putting disability um, access on there um, So because then people know it's for them because our community has been told no for so long but actually knowing that you're up for having a conversation about access requirements, you know, put um, an easy read version out, put a BSL version out. We were just um, doing this last night um, quite late because we're launching a Channel 4 initiative today, mentoring initiative. So as, as it was all signed off, I was doing the audio version. So just do an audio version, read your adverts so, people, so it's much more accessible. As soon as you start showing thought towards access, you will then be telling, sending out a really big message to people that this is accessible and this is for them. Our culture in the disabled communities, we've had so many knockbacks and so many rejections, unless it sort of says, you're welcome, I'm gonna open the door for you. Sometimes we don't choose to pick those battles. Um, so that's really useful, But because if you get disabled people in your team, at the moment, um, disabled people are one fifth of the population. And if we're excluded, if you one in five people has a disability, if we're not in your team, then you're missing out of one in five of people's opinions and ideas. So that's really important to sort of look at it that way. Particularly things, yeah, get somebody on your board, get, get those opinions and that lived experience. It's about lived experience. Get that 
integrated into your organisation. Do you know this is really interesting? Actually, I, we had a conversation a, a, a few weeks ago. Uh, I think we talked about EY being the headline partner for the awards, and I think for me, these it, it's great. People say, "Oh, great, you've got the sponsors and awards," and that, but I like things to be um, a partnership. I like what can we do? You know, it's it's you know, it's never about putting a brand on things. It's about um, what we can enable together for future. And I think this will be. If you like our sixth awards and every year we always like to um, try and do it a little bit different, not do it differently, but make adaptations to mm-hmm. increase a wider representation. Um, and one of the things we were talking about with EY was they've just opened a neurodiversity centre. And one of the things that's been, you've just said, talked about an audio version there. That's what I'm passionate to do if we can in the next round of nominations is open for audio nominations. Um, and that is to sort of, reach people that you know might not be comfortable or are not as articulate writing things down I hate writing things down mm. you know but this is not about me but it's how do we reach and how do we make space uh, to have your story shared because like you say everything that you're doing and create this create the creative confidence collective and look at the numbers that you've grown in your community you're just talking about is is we want to you are welcome you know we want more representation and when we did our leveling up report just before Christmas, um, we, you know, we always talk about we want more seats at the table. We want more representation. We want voices to be heard. But otherwise, you just create an echo chambers all the time. So I think, yes. you know, absolutely increasing that diverse representation on the board without it being a tick box. Be intentional about what you're asking for, I think. And that's what you're asking for as well, isn't it? That's what you're saying. Yeah, totally. Because it's that thing of going, actually, you will benefit when you let let these those people in. Do you know what I mean? Because we bring new angles. We bring very lived ex- experience of solution focused approach to life. Do you know what I mean? My life outside the house is forever looking at solutions of how can I adapt to that. So therefore, we're very adaptable people. But also, we bring a different angle, a different thought process on things. So actually, you're not going to miss out. What you're going to do is inc- increase your capacity to achieve stuff, um, and. Yes, by going, can you do audio applications? Could you do video applications? Then what you might find is you have some very creative input and also have people that you'd have never reached before who are mm. doing wonderful things. And that's the thing about putting putting disability on your agenda from the start means that it doesn't become a block or an issue later. Because if every every meeting you go, okay, how do we make that accessible? Have we thought about that? And actually the, the wonderful thing about access is it's, it's beneficial to everybody. So say, for example, at Coronation Street, they, um, over the years, we've um, now got a fully accessible route around the cobbles. We've got um, electronic assisted doors, all sorts of things, but they help everybody. They don't, as well as helping the disabled person, but you just need to stop seeing it as helping the disabled person. It's going, how do we make this accessible? Because for example, those electronic assisted doors means if you're carrying something heavy, which a lot of people are doing because things are moving around, that makes it so much easier. The cobble-free flat route all the way around the street means that cameras, dollies, equipment is much easier to, you know, traverse around. So I remember um, there's a construction company um, when they were building Manchester Airport, we're talking about actually they put a wheelchair lift into their construction site offices. And the amount of people um, that came out of that lift and went, oh, God, that was a lot easier. I'm pregnant or my back hurts or my leg's bad today or that was heavy to carry that, you know, and actually... Once you start to see that access is for everyone, it stops it being singled out for the disabled person um, because actually everybody has access. And I think that's the thing to realise. It's a great leveller. We all have different access, different times in our lives down to, you know, different circumstances. Or just, you know, the thing is that and by having that and realising that we all have different ways and different means that we need to enable us to do our best work or to access things differently means that actually then we've got everybody in the room and it's always a much stronger environment when everybody has an input. I love this advice. And the thing that we always do with the podcast is we always, you know, because people engage in different ways, some people like to listen, some people like to read, some people like to see something visual. So we we always have like a a series of communication that supports the podcast. So please check out on our socials. Please download the cheat sheet as well, if you like, that we go with, because the the advice that you've just given there is, is like you say, it's for all, you know. So, I'm, you know, thank you so much. And, you know, the last, you know, I just, the last question is always the last two years have been challenging. 
just about to enter, aren't we, the, the two years officially since the, the pandemic started or was announced by the World Health Organization. And uh, many of us experienced isolation. Many people with disabilities have felt for much of their lives. So and you've just talked about, you know, the arts and uh, the industry that you're in. And there's so much talk about STEM. And I'm always passionate about STEAM. I think the A is critical. How important have the arts been in supporting all our mental health during this time? Oh my gosh, completely invaluable, haven't they? Um, I think people don't, probably don't even realise sometimes that they're doing art, um, but the mindfulness art gives you in that headspace and that creativity. Um, I did a Radio 4 documentary on it quite a few years ago now, and being creative actually does give your brain endorphins, it releases natural steroids. So, and also it's just that headspace. So, you know, you might find yourself doing a mindfulness current, current book, sewing something, listening to something, you know, just, I think it's so important to use your own creativity and give yourself that area and time in your life. I read a wonderful book recently um, about actually art is your driven, your passion. It doesn't need to be for other people. So have an explore, definitely, because I've found that, I mean, I've coming up to two years being in the same building other than hospital visits. So I think being creative and achieving things and and doing your own art is so fundamentally important to your own mental health and well-being. Definitely try and encourage yourself to give you that space. Because also I find that, because I'm forever trying to build what we're doing at Triple C, trying to, you know, um, creating new opportunities, et cetera, for different people, but therefore to have your own space. I sew, I colour, I, I do quite a lot of different things just to sort of go, okay, that shuts my mind down. And all our brains, you know, if you're if you're quite if you've got quite a fast paced brain, which is, you know, always on the go, to actually give it some breathing space, I think it's really important because actually it enriches the work you do the other side of it as well. I love that phrase about giving your brain breathing space. I have tried to, or I definitely adopted jigsaws, became a little bit obsessed with jigsaws. Oh. Tiny bit worried to keep finding little bits of them around the boat. Um, so that's a little bit confusing. So when uh, the next person gets to open them, we might have one, my yoga jigsaw in the queen space jigsaw, but never mind. <laughs> sure, we'll get to that. Um, but, you know, it, I just love it. I love just having this conversation with you. Just all of these, this insight, you know, I'm going to repeat that, putting disability on the agenda for the start. And it's not just helping disabled people, it's helping all. You know, I mm. think that is so critical. So listen, a, a massive, massive thank you for joining me today. And of course, massive congratulations on the MBE. Oh, thank you. Can't wait. Can't wait to see them pictures. <laughs> Mate, I'm going to be wearing a hat. Definitely. Oh, got to, <laughs> got to. I believe it's the law, Shirley. But listen, thank you. Thank you for being just so honest and open with us today and giving us sort of such wisdom as well, you know. And as I say, congratulations on all your honours and thank you for everything that you do. I mean, you literally use your power for good, Shirley. And, you know, please do. You'll be able to catch up on all, all the information about everything Shirley is doing through Triple C um, as well in the show notes. So you'll be able to find out more information there if you want to find out more thank you so much for tuning in today and do tell your friends about our podcast reach out to us on all our socials at north power women on twitter and northern power women on all our other social media or drop us a line podcast at northern and join us on monday the 14th of february when we'll be joined by another force of nature from the northern power women community and don't forget to help us showcase the role models as he announced the power list including Shirley and the future list tomorrow i'm simone roche and you've been listening to the northern power women podcast a what goes on media production oh, yeah.